you very much. Now, listen, you may not want to hear or talk about it much, certainly not on other networks, but let's face it, the shooter was Muslim. And retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West says, the only way to stop Muslim extremism is to address it, talk about it out in the open. Uh, Colonel West, welcome to the show. In the last 24 hours, you have been on fire. You've made some tremendous comments that people say have been provocative. Your point is, though, that these comments must be made. Well, I don't think it's anything provocative in stating who the enemy is, and it's a pleasure to be with you, Charles. You know, we cannot continue along the path of political correctness and not admitting that this is an Islamic jihadist attack. You know, back in June of 2009, we did not want to pay attention to what uh, Memphis-born Carlos Bledsoe did at the Little Rock Army Recruiting Station. We still today in the Obama administration classify the November 2009 Islamic jihadist attack at Fort Hood at workplace as workplace violence. So when is it going to come a time when the commander in chief will break his silence and finally say the thing that everyone knows that we have a domestic problem with Islamic jihadism here and that ISIS has infiltrated this country by way of social media networking. So, Colonel West, let's say the White House, against all odds, had an epiphany and said, uh, you're absolutely right. This is radical Islam. It's, it's run amok. What's the next step? Well, I think that, first of all, you have to start using your informational systems to, as the president tried to say, defeat the ideology of militant Islamic jihadism. You have to talk about what it is. You have to talk about its goals and objectives. Then you also have to be able to use your economic power to be able to leverage that against these uh, Islamic terrorist groups and see it as a global jihadist network and also the countries that are supporting it. And then you have to, of course, use the iron fist of your military to, uh, to squash it. Unfortunately, the president, who is cutting 40,000 of our active duty uh, soldiers from the Army, also said at the Pentagon that you can't defeat an ideology with just bullets, only with ideas. Well, that's not how we defeated Nazism, fascism, communism. Can we also, uh, and since we're on the, on the topic of uh, maybe being honest and not politically correct, uh, say, listen, let's have a more laser-like focus here at home. Uh, you know, the ideology, when the president has mentioned the ideology and a generational sort of battle that we're in in his mind with this, he, he, he put it up there as if it was the old fight between, let's say, capitalism and socialism, when in fact we know that for the most part, most of these, uh, most of these shooters have either, they either came here from the Middle East as youngsters or their parents came here. Can we start to be honest about zeroing in our resources and, and where do we draw the line between the sort of racial profile that people say is wrong. I, there's some, there's got to be a middle ground in there where we can be more effective. Well, it's not about racial profiling. Uh, being a Muslim is not about race. Being a Muslim is being a follower of Islam. And it has to do with trend analysis. And I think that one of the most important things that we should do in this case, and I hope that's what the FBI is doing, looking at the associates of Mr. Abdul Aziz, start looking at where did he attend his mosque, start looking at the imam that was the head of the mosque. You have to start looking at this incredible intricate network. And this is not about targeting any specific type of individuals but it is about getting to the bottom of this ideology and how it has it been able to take such a very uh, deep root in the United States of America. This is not about lone wolves. This is not about lone gunmen. This is about an ideology that is turning people here in the United States of America or people that are coming here to these shores with this ideology. Colonel, Colonel West, you know, a lot of people have a problem with the optics from President Obama. I mean, you've talked already uh, about his comment, uh, commentary and, and, and how he's walked this certain line. Now we're getting word that uh, President Obama is going to appear on The Daily Show on Tuesday. He's gone to a Broadway Playwise in New York. I mean, is this really the time to do these kind of things? No, it's not. I mean, that's the thing that is very disconcerting. It's just the same as after we had the American beheaded by ISIS, he went out and played golf. Now is not the time when you just have four Marines that were killed on a, you know, an unsecured reserve center in Chattanooga, Tennessee, for you to go out to New York for a fundraiser. This is what the president should do right now. He should reverse the 1993 Bill Clinton administrative order about our men and women not being able to be armed and defend themselves on military installations. He could do that right now. He should have done it this morning, first thing, waking up. We know that he takes plenty of time to write executive orders on things that violate our Constitution. And I would like to see more indignation from President Obama, somewhat like he showed toward Major Garrett, 
who asked him a very poignant question yeah. about uh, him going into a deal with Iran while four Americans are being held hostage. Amen. Amen, Colonel West. I, I, a lot of people echo those same thoughts. He really was visibly upset and way too calm yesterday when this all occurred. We appreciate your time this morning. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Okay.